everyone, welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Join me now to discuss the latest developments in the Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine, its minister himself, Mr. Andriy Pawarsky. Mr. Pawarsky, welcome to Viewpoint. Good morning. Mr. Pawarsky, uh, back in December you submitted your letter of resignation. Uh, the parliament did not approve it, you were kept in the office. Just a few days ago you said again that you were hoping that the parliament will accept your resignation. So can you tell us why do you want to leave the office so badly? Well, there is a number of reasons. It, it, it's, uh, it's a very complex, uh, essential issue, but uh, one of the major reasons is that uh, I cannot afford to be a minister uh, in Ukraine. I cannot uh, live off the uh, salary that uh, I'm paid. I have two kids and uh, I have the opportunity cost, uh, which is very high. Essentially, I spent a year and my team spent a year changing the uh, ministry, the infrastructure in this country, changing the country. Uh, now it's time to go back to the private sector and uh, uh, make some money to support the family. Uh, and again, this is one of the one of the reasons, uh, but it's, it's just time to go back to the private sector. And there is nothing wrong with changing ministers. There's just nothing wrong with that. It's very important that whoever comes next uh, shares uh, the values that I introduced in the ministry and the reforms that I started in the ministry. Mr. Vosk, if you allow, we will go back to the issue of, of payment because I do have some questions on that. But uh, just a few days ago, another minister uh, who was um, a very, as, as yourself, a uh, reformist minister, um, a minister who came from, from the business, from the corporate sector, uh, the minister of economy, uh, Mr. Um, Ivar Sabramavichus, also submitted his uh, letter of resignation, uh, citing that he could no longer work because he felt an enormous pressure from the government, the, uh, the, the MPs, who are trying to, to impose his people, uh, their people, as, as his uh, deputies. And uh, when we were talking, we were just yesterday talking to, to, to his advisors, to his, to his team, and they said that this pressure was felt throughout the entire period of, of, of their office. Was that the same thing with you? Did you feel this pressure? Look, uh, th there, was not, there was no mentioning of the government. Uh, and pressure from the government. The government operated as a pretty good team, actually, and what we've done over the past 14 months was a teamwork. Without teamwork, it was well, But the government, impossible. I don't mean the cabinet minister, I mean but, the, the general... Uh, uh, the in of the general, show. of course, there was a lot of pressure. Of course. Uh, look, the system doesn't change uh, in one day. Uh, you cannot make a corrupt bureaucrat wake up one day and say that suddenly, oh, because of the uh, revolution, I will not take bribes. Of course, for 24 years, a lot of people were benefiting from bribes, bribes and that was the only source of income for them. The but, the idea, but the idea was to get rid of these people. So are you saying that these people are still in the government, that's not in the what, parliament? That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's a systematic issue. By removing just one person, you can't fix the system. So the government, Ivaras, myself, we started systematic changing by changing the system in general. And when the system realized, a lot of those people realized that we can win, we can change the system, we can remove sources of illegal income from those people. They started fighting back and fighting hard, really, really hard through the court system, through law enforcement offices, through deputy requests to GEPAU, etc., etc., So, et Mr. Pavorsi, the question is why these people still have the power to fight? Why they're still in their respective offices? Why they still have their respective positions? A lot of them are deputies. And the people of Ukraine selected them, voted for them. So, again, this is not a black and white question. And... For 24 years, this is how it worked. And a lot of people say that one year passed and some people are still in power that used to benefit from this corrupt system. You cannot change the system in one year. Look at Poland and other countries. It took years to change the system. But those countries had a very strong uh, legislative system, court system, law enforcement system, etc. All these three are in the making right now. 
they have to be reformed as well. So in Ukraine, we have a very complex issue that cannot be changed in one year. But we started a very important process. We started this process through deregulation, through making very important systemic changes in the system, through fair compensation of government employees that work for state-owned companies, privatization. One of the sources of illegal income is government-owned companies. We have more than 3,000 companies. On average, if you look at Europe, you will see maybe a dozen state-owned companies at all. That's it. We have more than 3,000. For most of those companies, the government doesn't get any benefit at all whatsoever. We need to privatize them. And the parliament failed to approve the privatization law. I don't know how many times. Well, finally, two weeks ago, the parliament passed the law in the first reading to start mass privatization. But what I hear is that there is no plan to vote for it in the second reading. Because the bees cannot fight the honey. That's the situation, and they understand. So the main problem is with the parliament, because you said that these three issues, the, the, the parliament, the, the legislative base, uh, the judiciary system, and the, the law enforcement are the key pillars to change the system. And whereas there is no uh, political will to change the legislative system to do the other two pillars, then everything fails. There is political will. The process has begun with the creation of the independent new anti-corruption agency. The new law on the reform of the judiciary system just got passed. It, but it took almost a year to negotiate this law with the all stakeholders, etc. So the process has begun. It took a year, in certain cases two, two years. Of course the public is impatient. Of course such people as me, we are impatient. But th this is how it works in the political environment in this country. I don't want to say that this guy is guilty or this guy is guilty, etc. There has to be a political consensus for all parties, for everyone in the entire political spectrum, saying that we are reforming the country. Do not disturb, period. For the next couple of years, we adopt all the necessary laws that are necessary to reform the country. And after a couple of years, if there is political fighting, go ahead. Keep fighting. Mr. Pavarsky, if you allow, uh, can we go back to the issue of um, the, the payments uh, for, for, for public servants? Uh, the salary of the um, Ukrainian top, of, even top officials is ridiculously low. Uh, there were uh, discussions, there were talks that a, a special fund will be created within uh, the government, which will be uh, funded, if you allow, by, by Western donors, by international organizations. I understand this has not been done. No. Why? This is one of the biggest questions that I have, that I'm asking myself. And I spent the entire year, last year, talking to uh, the uh, embassy officials, to the EU officials, to a lot of people, explaining to them the importance of the civil servant reform, and especially in the area of fair compensation. And unfortunately, I think I failed in delivering the importance of this message. Uh, my resignation sent a very strong signal to the Ukrainian community, to the international community. And I think the signal that Ivaras has sent uh, will also reach the destination. And the uh, foreign donors will pay more attention to the issue of the creation of the fund. We need a fund for two or three years that will, a top up fund that will provide market compensation, maybe even on the European level, to a group of select individuals that will stay for two or three years in the government, will do their job in transforming the country. And after that, the budget will have enough revenues will not depend on the top-up fund, will have enough revenues to compensate the state employees from the budget. Mr. Pavarsky, in your opinion, who is behind 
halting this process of creating this budget? Because obviously the, the Ukrainian, even the ministers have ridiculously low salary. I think, I think your official salary is lower than mine. And, uh, and, and we're, not, and we're not talking here about, well, the fair compensation is not uh, something exor exorbitant. It's a couple thousand euros per, 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 per month, which is, which is absolutely uh, feasible for, for, for the foreign donors. Mm -hmm. So who is behind halting this process? Uh, again, there is not just one single bad guy, Dr. Evil. Uh, there, are se se there, there are several groups stakeholders. Well, I think there are two First sides. There are Western partners and there is Ukrainian government. Who is not willing to do what? Uh, there was not enough attention paid to this issue by both the government and the stakeholder, the Western stakeholders. And the parliament at this point is not ready to take on the political decision to change the necessary laws to create the fund to provide opportunities for the ministers and their teams to be paid fairly. Because every time we, talk, we start talking about it in the parliament, the parliamentarians start their political rhetoric saying that the pensioners make 2,000 hryvnias and you want to make 2,000 euros, for instance. It's obscene and we will not vote for that, etc., etc., etc. I will not use the obscenity words that I hear. But that's all political rhetoric. In personal conversations, they all understand. They don't live off the official salary. Let's not just fool anyone. But they don't want to take the political risk because their constituencies may not vote for them because of that uh, in, during the next election. So in this situation, the foreign donors need to pay more attention to this issue. And we're not talking about billions of dollars. We're not talking about hundreds of millions. We're talking about tens of millions of dollars that we need per, per year for the next couple of years to jumpstart the system, to change the system, and then the budget will have enough resources. Is there a possibility to arrange for this fund without changing legislation? No. No. So it's a deadlock? Uh, right now, yes. But without resolving this situation, we will not be able to retain the high quality people uh, within ministries. Volunteers, what ha volunteers cannot run ministries. It's impossible. It's not sustainable. Yeah, it looks like some very complex issues here, Mr. Minister. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We'll be following these developments really closely. Uh, Mr. Andriy Pavarsky, Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine. We're discussing the minister's continued wish to leave his office and the crumbling state of Ukraine's car roads. Thank you for watching Viewpoints.